This is Boulevard the Temple, a Daguerre type made by Louis Daguerre in 1838. It's generally accepted as the earliest photograph to include people. It is a view of a busy street, but because the exposure lasted for several minutes, the moving traffic left no trace. Only the two men near the bottom left corner, one of them apparently having his boots polished, remained in one place long enough to be visible. Now let's go back a little. You may have wondered why we don't see any photographs from the previous eras, in spite of so many experiments and observations with camera obscura. The reason is that nobody had really figured out how to capture the image onto something that was permanent. Ideas of fixing the images seen in mirrors or other ways of creating images automatically may also have been in people's minds long before anything like photography was developed, which was exactly something what Niepce was inventing. Joseph Nicephor Niepce Some consider him as the first photographer inventor of photography. In 1816, using paper coated with silver chloride, he succeeded in photographing the images formed in a small camera. But the photographs were negatives, darkest where the camera image was lightest and vice versa. And he could find no way to prevent the coating from darkening all over when it was exposed to light for viewing. The oldest surviving photograph of the image formed in camera was created by Niebs in 1826 or 27. It was made on a polished sheet and the light sensitive substance was a thin coating of bitumen, a naturally occurring petroleum tar that was dissolved in lavender oil. After a very long exposure in the camera, some believe to be several days, the bitumen was sufficiently hardened in proportion to its exposure to light, leaving a positive image. To see the image plainly, the plate had to be lit and viewed in such a way that the bare metal appeared dark and the bitumen relatively light. Niepce died suddenly in 1833, leaving his notes to Decker. More interested in silver-based processes than Niebs had been, Decker experimented with photographing camera images directly onto a mirror-like surfaced plate that had been fumed with iodine vapor, which reacted with the silver to form a coating of silver iodide. After a few successful experiments on 7th Jan 1839, this first complete practical photographic process was announced at a meeting of the French Academy of Sciences known as Daguerreotype Process. Decker shared this process patent-free for the world to use. This was the most common commercial process until the late 1850s when it was superseded by the collodion process which is a wet plate process. Decorative swept through Paris and across Europe. This use of invention spread across the world. The decorative studio attracted a lot of Americans. People from across all walks of life could afford to have their portraits made. There were mobile studios that travelled across. Robert Cornelius' self-portrait, October or November 1839, an approximately quarter plate size decorotype, and on the back was written the first light picture ever taken. In 1841, calotype or talbotype, a photographic process, was introduced by William Henry Fox Talbot using paper coated with silver iodide. The term calotype comes from the Greek, which means beautiful impression. Talbot's developed out silver halide negative process is the basic technology used by the chemical film cameras today. In 1851, English sculptor Frederick Scott Archer invented the collodion process. By the end of the 1860s, it had almost entirely replaced the first announced photographic process, the decorotype. The collodion process, mostly synonymous with the collodion wet plate process, requires the photographic material to be coated, sensitized, exposed and developed within the span of about 15 minutes. 
During the 1880s, the collodion process was largely replaced by the gelatin dry plates, glass plates with photographic emulsion of silver halides suspended in gelatin.